Welcome to another Old Testament survey lesson. This is lesson 37, and I will be covering the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah is one of the last four books of the Old Testament, and he is one of the last four minor prophets. We have Zephaniah here, then Haggai, Zechariah, and then Malachi. The book of Zephaniah was written by himself. He was the son of Cushi. His name means the Lord has hidden or the Lord has stored up. This perhaps indicates the doctrinal truth of the Lord hiding his elect during the day of the Lord. This according to chapter 2 verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Now, the Lord is also storing up his wrath for his enemies, according to Romans chapter 2, verse 5. There are three chapters, 53 verses, and according to Dr. Ruckman's commentary, there are 1,616 words. Zephaniah would have been a contemporary of the prophet Jeremiah. The book would have been written around 630 B.C. Zephaniah would have been prophesying during the reign of Josiah, king of Judah. The theme of the book is the day of the Lord, which is really the theme of the whole Bible. Now, the day of the Lord is a period of time that covers from the start of the tribulation and runs all the way through the millennium, so 1,007 years. However, Zephaniah is primarily dealing with the tribulation period and the second advent. So when he's referring to the day of the Lord, he's primarily dealing with those seven years culminating with the second advent, the battle of Armageddon. However, he does touch briefly on the millennial uh, period as well. This phrase, the day of the Lord, is found seven times in six verses. Chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. Chapter 1, verse 14 and 18. Chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. The book of Zephaniah probably has the most terrible and most condensed account of the tribulation period as described in chapter 1 verses 7 through 18. Now the prophecies against Judah and Jerusalem and the remnant of Baal can be found in verse 4. There's also judgment against the nations as found in chapter 3 verse 8. These judgments are a picture of the judgment upon both Jew and Gentile and the kingdoms of the earth in the tribulation. You'll see this in Revelation 11:15, where it talks about the kingdom of the world to become the kingdom of God. And uh, the kings of the earth are struck through in Psalms 110, verse 5. You look up both those references there. In a King James Bible, you'll have the exact quote concerning the kingdoms being turned over to God. Now, God has a twofold agenda uh, through this uh, judgment period, through this seven-year tribulation period and second advent. The first is to gather his people Israel unto himself at the second advent. This is according to chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. Secondly, his agenda is to gather the nations for their destruction at the second advent. This is according to chapter 3, verse 8 of Zephaniah. The sins for which Zephaniah is pronouncing judgment is the prideful, duplicitous nature of worshiping the stars, called the host of heaven, in verse 4, while also worshiping the Lord. This is found in verses 4 and 5 of chapter 1 and verse 11 of chapter 3. You'll see in chapter 1, verse 4, that they're swearing by the Lord and this being called Malcolm or Mal Malcam. Uh, this is another name for Moloch. This is the god that uh, the Israelites would uh, sacrifice their, their children to by putting it into its belly, which was a furnace that would burn them up. These are pagan priests conducting religious services as they were in the days of Elijah, or as you'd find in a Roman Catholic Mass. The Lord Jesus Christ dealt with this in Mark chapter 7, where he says the, the hypocrites there, the religious crowd, honored the Lord with their lips, but their hearts were far from him. Now verses 11 and 18 are a match for the merchants being cut down in Revelation chapter 18. Now, if you compare this with Ezekiel 7.19 and Isaiah 31.7 and uh, 
other places where it talks about silver and gold and idols, you'll find that uh, in the tribulation period, uh, there will be silver and gold that will be used uh, to make idols. And what Zephaniah is saying is that these idols will not be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, both in the tribulation period and also at the second advent. All right, now, um, moving on from that, the word lees in chapter 1 and verse number 12, the word lees there, only shows up in two other places. It's Isaiah 25, 6 and Jeremiah 48, 11. The word is a reference to the dregs or the sediment of wine that has settled to the bottom of a vessel. So the modern day saying for settled on their lees would be sits on his butt or is sedentary. Now here's an outline for the book of Zephaniah. Chapter 1. We find in chapter 1 the prophecy of God's judgment on the tribe of Judah. In chapter 1 verse 1, the word of the Lord comes to Zephaniah. And then in chapter 1 verses 2 through 6, the prophecy of judgment upon the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. Then verses 7 through 18 of chapter 1, we have the prophecies of the day of the Lord. Chapter 2. Prophecy of God's judgment on the nations. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, it's prophecy of judgment against Egypt. Verse 5 through verse 8 is prophecy of judgment against Canaan. Chapter 2, verses 8 through 11 are prophecies of judgment against Moab and Ammon. And then verses 12 through 15, it's prophecies of judgment against Ethiopia, Assyria, and Babylon. All Muslim nations there. Then in chapter 3, we have prophecy of God's restoration to the promised land. We have a repeat of the sins of Jerusalem in verses 1 through 7 of chapter 3. Again, you'll see the agenda of the Lord to gather the nations, chapter 3, verse 8. Then you'll find the regathering of the Jews, verses 9 to 10. The regeneration of the Jews, verses 11 through 13. The reign of Jesus Christ as King of the Jews, verses 14 through 16. And then restoration of the land back to the Jews, verses 16 through 18. Now the regathering, the regeneration, the reign, and the restoration are all connected to covenants. All right. Now the regathering of, uh, of the Jews from the four corners of the earth is a promise that uh, God... Uh, made to uh, the Jews there, Israel, back in Deuteronomy 29, verse 1. This is what is called or considered to be the land covenant. All right, then you have uh, the promise to regenerate Israel. This is based on the new covenant as found in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. Now, the promise to reestablish the throne of David to Israel, and it will be the Lord Jesus Christ ruling and reigning. This is based on the Davidic covenant as found in 1 Chronicles chapter 17, verses 10 through 14. Then you'll have the promise to restore the possession of the land to Israel permanently, and this is based on the Abrahamic covenant as given in Genesis chapter 15, verse 18. So there you have a brief summary and overview on the book of Zephaniah. Until next time, may God bless.